Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Total Tutor Show. I'm the host of the show, Neil Haley. you got to go to my website, TotalTutor.net, to find out more information on the Total Education Network. We keep getting syndicated. We're syndicating 100-plus stations. you got to go to my website. I also own a birth through college tutoring and consulting company, and I want to help welcome my co-host, Jarrett. And i got a big surprise for you tonight, Jarrett. I am always surprised by what you have in store for us, but I cannot wait to hear what we have for me and my listeners. Well, I, I tell you, it's the thing is, Jarrett, sometimes you're always like the backup to interview our celebrities. But when I heard about uh, he was interested in coming on the show, it was an absolute honor. I've had super Steelers, but they're from the 70s, but not a current Steeler. So I want to welcome the program, Ryan Clark. Ryan, how are you? Good, guys. How are you doing? Fantastic. It's an honor that you're on the show, and uh, uh, I'm really excited to learn more and more about your foundation, see how our listeners can help. So why did you decide to do the uh, foundation, Ryan? You know, just going through some of the things that, that I've been going through and that I had to deal with, uh, with still also losing the system and lines uh, to it, just looking for a way to give back to the community of the people who suffer from this disease and from this illness. Uh, I met Dr. Mark Gladwell, who was, who was a doctor here in, in Pittsburgh, who had more passion and more vigor and more fight to find a cure for this disease than anyone I've ever met, even people who suffer daily uh, from this illness. And so it was exciting to team up with him, and uh, UTMC uh, had a strong backing. And, and we decided to start the Ryan Clark Cheer League, which is, you know, what the money goes to that we earn any kind of way, whether it be through donation, whether it be through fundraisers. It's truly the sickle cell awareness and also to the sickle cell research. You know, our goal is to find the cure. And on the way to finding the cure, if we can, you know, help people just get along with the, the daily struggles that it takes uh, when dealing with this illness, dealing with sickle cell, um, those are the things that we want to do. Well, I think it's fantastic, Jared. And I, again, we always find these athletes that are really trying to give back, Jared. Isn't that true? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've interviewed so many athletes, and, and uh, we, we hear a familiar story uh, from them that it's personalized. It's, it's something that they are passionate, and I can even hear that in Ryan's voice. He's passionate as a football player, and I can absolutely hear his passion uh, about the uh, about his foundation and, and what they're providing. Ryan, I, I, I have a quick question here. In what way has your professional uh, career as a football player helped you or laid the groundwork for this foundation? Who did you reach out to to kind of uh, kind of promote this and get it going? Well, you know, obviously, you know, being on TV, you know, through football, but also playing for an organization like I played for, Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, we've competed in Super Bowls, we've won Super Bowls, a uh, very visible team when it comes to the NFL. It allowed me to put my face out there and kind of be an ambassador uh, for my foundation, but also for Sickle Cell. Uh, we've never really had anyone really stand up and say, hey, I suffer from this illness in some way, or I've dealt with tragedy through sickle cell and you know i've come out on the other side here's how i've done it and i also want to help you so that's been uh you know very beneficial to myself and also the foundation uh when you have a team like me you're able to do events and have the troy palomalus and you know and the ben roethlisberger and all these other guys who are on your team help out uh they're also everywhere i go whether it's like you know do a show on espn there's espn personalities who are willing to help me out uh Anything I've done, I've got nothing but total support, even having opportunities to come on your show, you know, and talk about my foundation. So it's been really amazing, uh, just the opportunities that have been afforded to, afforded to me. Also, next week, I'm getting the opportunity to speak to the National Black Caucus Caucus of State Legislators, you know, which is something I know I wouldn't get the opportunity to do um, if I wasn't a, a football player. And so it's exciting that I've been, I've been able to use that for the celebrities that I've I've been able to gain through playing football that God has blessed me to do um, to help this disease and to help people who suffer from it. Well, absolutely, and I wanted to go right to that, Ryan, and I know why is because of the Roonies. The Roonies really set the tone for you guys. I interviewed uh, Art Rooney II at the Andy Russell Golf Tournament a couple weeks ago, and he talked about how he really takes what his grandfather taught him and that the team really looks at giving back. And it really helps, I guess, the entire organization how you guys are all looking for those opportunities and the Steelers really afford you those opportunities, don't they? Oh, definitely. I mean, it starts from the top. 
if you look at our organization, if you look at, uh, you know, our owner, our president, Rooney, Rooney family, just through our history, they've always given back. You know, even with the fashion show each year, you know, we donate all that money to charity. We have different walks, uh, which I'll be actually co-chairing one uh, this year. So everything that we do is, you know, we promote giving back to community. When you have young kids come in, uh, whether it be a day, you know, during the week on Tuesdays when we're off, you know, we get into the schools, we get out in the, in, into the community to try to help. And I think when you have that coming from the top of your organization, it filters through all the way, uh, whether it's the secretary, whether it's the security guards, you know, uh, the guys that work the front desk, everybody in our building is about giving back. It's about sharing, you know, what we've been able to obtain with our community, with the people who support us. And also the Rooney's, they are, they're willing to help in any endeavor that you have. You know, if you have a fundraiser, if, if you have some type of event that's supporting, you know, your foundation, they're willing to be a part of it, whether it's giving you all items to auction off or making sure you have people there to support you from the organization. And when you have that type of backing and support, you know, it only allows you to, you know, go further and do more uh, for your cause. So, in other words, an absolute team effort. We don't do this on our own. We no, have really a is. team to support us. It really is. You know, you can't do it by yourself. Uh, you can't. Uh, there's no way you can generate enough passion, no way you can generate enough energy or enthusiasm if it's just one man going at it alone. And one thing about our team, guys always come out in sport. If you have an event, if you have something going on, guys are going to do their best to make it. And I think it is it's like that across the league, but I think it's a really special place here in Pittsburgh. We look at each other like brothers. We're family. I think we behave that way on and off the field. One uh, question also, Brian, I wanted to ask you is uh, about fundraising, especially with the economy and everything. How difficult is it to fundraise for charities, and how how much have you learned from others on how to be able to do, do a great fundraiser and raise the right money? You know, um, honestly, uh, it's been awesome to be paired with U- UPNC. Obviously, they have so much backing and so much support, and they've really been wonderful uh, to me. Uh, I have a guy who I work closely with who's not just a, a business partner, but a friend, Steve Tazili, who works his butt off constantly, basically running my foundation and finding different ways to fundraise, but also finding right ways to give back that aren't about money. Uh, last week, we were able to just bring out some kids who suffer from sickle cell and their families, whether it be their mothers or their fathers, and just give them opportunity to play basketball with us, uh, you know, kick the soccer ball around, eat pizza, play video games, just to give them a break from the from the monotony of dealing with this illness and the pain that you uh, have to go through when you have it every day. Uh, we have a softball game. Uh, coming up here on, on June 11th. But, you know, Steelers will be paired with, you know, media types and local celebrities. Uh, that's just another way to raise money, but also get people around in the community so you can spread your, you know, spread your news, spread, spread the word about what you're doing uh, with your fundraiser. We had cleats for the cure last year where guys donated actual game-worn cleats, and we got, you know, local artists to paint them or, or set up sculptures uh, to get people to buy it and just to get people enthusiastic about what we're doing. And so we've been able to raise money, but you also know you have to incorporate, you know, the community and also teach people as they go along in these things. And so it's been fun just to learn from, you know, Troy doing his fundraiser when you go to Brett Kiesel, uh, you know, for statistics, fibrosis, everything that I pick up from other people, I try to incorporate it and use it uh, in our fundraiser. It's simply amazing, and, and Ryan, I, I, I know our listeners will be interested in in hearing about this, and, and obviously you're a very modest person because you keep referring to so many other players and the good work that they're doing, um, and not necessarily referring to yourself. But um, you you earned an award from the NFL, uh, correct? Yes, this year I, uh, I received the uh, Walter Payton Award. Uh, you know, for the team and what it is, it's, you know, it's just voted on, honestly, by, you know, Mr. Rooney and, you know, people that work, uh, with the team closely in community relations. They you know, it's about people who are, about guys on the team who do good work in the, in the community, guys who are giving back, guys who are reaching out. And, you know, it's, it's an honor more than any other award that you can receive. I think it's the biggest thing because it's voted on by people who deal with you every day. People who see you all the time, you know, who have thought enough of you to say that you deserve this. Um, it was huge. It was huge for me. It was also huge for our foundation. It was just another way to get out the good work that the, the people that work with the Ryan Clark Chili uh, are doing. 
I'm amazed, uh, Ryan, how uh, motivated you are to be successful with your foundation, have the right team around you. But again, it takes a team, as you said. Steve is very involved in it, in all these different things. But what is your ultimate goal with the foundation? You said a cure. But what, yeah. where do you see things in the next five years for your foundation? Well, you know, uh, we've been able to raise uh, tons of money. And what the money goes to right now, obviously, is awareness and research. But we're trying to, our uh, end goal is to work toward having the Ryan Clark, you know, Center for Sickle Cell Research, where that's all we do is work on finding a cure. Um, I think right now we would love to find one more FDA infusion, one, you know, maybe two, something where there will be more options for people to find ways to get released uh, from the sickle cell disease. But our end game and our, and our final goal is to find a cure find a way for people to not have to deal with this for their whole lives. Find a way to not to go to the hospitals week in and week out um, only to get pain pills or to be looked at as you're, as you're going to the hospital just to receive drugs. So it, for us, it is something that, you know, is near and dear to our hearts. It's not just about putting on a good front as if we're trying to make a difference. It's actually make a physical difference. And, you know, we want to find a cure. We would have, we would have named it something else. I named it Ryan Clark Help League. You know, if I wasn't trying to find a cure and put an end to the sickness. Just a terrific story that you have shared with us, Ryan. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about the the disease, the disorder. Um, our listeners may not know that it takes uh, two uh, a gene from each of the parents to yes. to, to have a, a diagnosis of of sickle cell. When do most people who have sickle cell sickle cell disease? When do they find out that they actually have it? You know, um, a lot of times it's you know once kids begin to get sick, uh, they're trying to implement things out to where you know all kids are tested, but it's just not something uh, that they have that that's effective right now that they're doing. Uh, I was actually at my daughter's baseball practice talking to one of her, one of the moms and. You know, her son's 18 months. She just found out that he saw some sort of stick of thalassemia. So it's, you know, it's, it's as they age and as, you know, they're usually young, but they find out because they're in and out of the hospital. You can't figure out why they're so sick, why they're so fragile. Uh, I know even for myself, I didn't find out I had the trait, um, you know, until I was almost an adult. And then even after that, I wasn't even educated on, you know, how to handle it, how to deal with it, or, you know, what could be the consequences or repercussions of having it. Um, so it's things that, you know, you find out young, but it's not something that they know when you're born. It's not like a lot of other, you know, illnesses that you get from birth, uh, genes, tra- you know, transmitted from the parents. Um, and, you know, so once they find out, you know, it's a life of transfusion, it's a, a life of, of pain, a life of medication, um, you know, and it's, and it's tough to do, but it's not, you know, two parents can, you know, both have the gene and you can have a child who doesn't have sickle cell. You know, it's not 100% that that is going to happen. You know, but in the cases that, that it does, it is really tough for them to deal with. And, and Ryan, I know Neil has so many questions here, but when we, we get someone on this show with your profile and, and the terrific work you've done, I tend to ask a lot of questions here. Um, I want to just ask, how do people get involved? If they're, if they're listening, they're listening right now, how are they going to get involved and say, I have to make a difference too? I mean, uh, if you go to CureLeague.org, uh, all the information is there. You can actually donate right there on site. But even if it's just not about donation, if you want uh, to get awareness, if you want to see what the foundation is doing before you decide uh, to be a part of it, you know, all the information is right there on our website, and that's CureLeague.org. Uh, and, you know, what we want to do is continue to update you on the things that we're doing, uh, but also get you involved. So is, is there anything information-wise you need to know? If there are children with sickle cell whose parents, you know, need to find doctors or, or need to find ways to, you know, be helpful and, and help them through that pain, you can find everything there on our website. Uh, you can also donate through text. And so, you know, we're just trying to find ways to reach out. Well, fantastic, Ryan. I, I, again, it was an honor to have you on the show. Can our listeners, is there another place to find you? Are you on Twitter and stuff and Facebook? Do you have a fan Facebook page? Well, uh, you said, do I have a fan Facebook? Yeah. I don't, uh, I think I do have a fan Facebook page. I know nothing about it. I've never actually, uh, been on it, uh, to, to, to be honest. Uh, the Cure League has a Twitter account. I don't have Twitter anymore. Uh, I decided to just focus on family and trying to figure out a way to, to beat the disease and, you know, win another Super Bowl. 
All right. Says, Neil, I hope I hope you're listening to what Ryan told you. You're always telling me to get on Facebook and Twitter and look at this, an NFL star telling us that he has nothing to do with it either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I was looking for you. I was about to tweet you out, Ryan, and I said, where's Ryan? And then and, and I'm like, he's not on Twitter. What? What's going on okay. here? And then, and then uh, so, and I, I understand that completely, but also, you know, it's very interesting. The last point when you said about a Super Bowl, I asked Art Rooney the second, I said, you know, every time that they count out the Steelers, that they're not going to, you know, do well, that forget them, write them off, they win a Super Bowl. Well, I hope after interviewing Art Rudy the second, then yourself, that we find out that we're going to be Super Bowl champs. So good luck on this season, and I hope that you bring back a ring. That's what I'm hoping for. Right, thank you guys so much for having me on. All right, take it, Ryan. See you later. Uh, okay, bye. Appreciate- All right, you're listening to Total Tutors Show, powered by Jarrett, and we'll be back in just a moment. 